<laughs> it's it's I mean it's acid rests are, are something that's actually not done a whole lot anymore. I mean it's still something that will be done in some traditional, particularly like German style um, mm -hmm. brewing uh, practices, but it's because malting now has gotten to be so effective and so efficient that a lot of those stages are not really required. Uh, and I mean, there's there's all sorts of different schools of thought on this. Um, I'm sure. You know, a lot of people uh, swear by the traditional approaches as far as this is the way that this works. A lot of the people look at it and go, this is, this is already done. You know, we don't have to do this anymore. Let's mm -hmm. just not waste time. Save time. Yeah, yeah. and you, yeah, like, you know, traditionally the English approaches just do, do it in one shot. German approaches traditionally tended to be steps where they, they add some water and they increase the temperature and they do that slowly over time. Okay. Um, and uh, there's all sorts, like I said, there's tons of school of thought in between. Uh, so it, it, it's highly variable from brewery to brewery, and mm -hmm. it really comes down to your philosophy on it. Gotcha. I think that, that's um, good to know. I think we could not have asked for a better person to do the terminology. Oh, I feel so very informative. Uh, More I than you like ever wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> That leads us into round three. And what we would like to know is your first beer memory. My first beer memory. Well, that would have to have happened in college. All right. Uh, <laughs> Appropriate. And I, um, you know, when I went to college, I was not a huge beer fan. When I left college, I was a huge beer fan. <laughs> uh, and you had a degree. And, 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 and yeah, it was, it was kind of the, the beginning of leading down this rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, you know, obviously when, when I first went to college, you tended to consume whatever was available. Oh, sure. Uh, mm. and, uh, <laughs> but yep. two of my very good friends from my freshman year that I have still friends with to this day and, and were uh, roommates with for three more years um, used to work at a uh, beer bar in Detroit. I went to college at University of Michigan, oh. and I, I grew up outside uh, Detroit. And uh, two of my these two of my friends worked at this place called uh, Yale Tap House. This is 20 years ago, so <laughs> times have changed. But the Tap House was kind of famous for having 10 taps, which was very rare at that point in time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they had something like 200 beers and bottles from all over the world, which again was very rare at that right. time. Sure. And for this really kind of cool locals dive bar, um, it was it was really kind of interesting but so my friends worked there and then I met them in college and they so they had been introduced to a much broader world of beer than uh what you usually drank in college uh <laughs> and, <laughs> nice. and they, they also um the other thing is right at that time Bell's Brewing Company uh which back then was known as Kalamazoo Brewing Company mm -hmm. uh, and is now pretty well known and it's one of the bigger craft breweries in the United States um, was really starting to make his presence felt both in Michigan and in the uh, all through the Upper Midwest. I was introduced to a lot of Bells early on, really started to enjoy those beers, and that's actually where I got into home brewing. Um, my uh, my my undergraduate degrees in, in chemistry. I ended up doing a biochemistry project where I made beer. Oh, uh, wow. Best project. It, it, it was pretty awesome. Sure. Bet you guys uh, ate that. Yeah. But, you know, fermentation is a biochemical process. Right. right. And so there you go. <laughs> um, and so I, anyway, I through that, uh, there was actually one of the oldest homebrewers clubs in, in the country, uh, the Ann Arbor Brewers Guild. And I got to meet some of those guys um, at that point when I was starting to get into that. Cool. And when I tried some of their beers, it really opened up my eyes to what's possible. Nice. Uh, so, you know, that was probably started to get into that my senior year of college. Went on to med school, so things kind of slowed down at that point a little bit uh, <laughs> a little as far as, as far as yeah. the beer scene goes. But, uh, but I actually ended up in Cleveland and uh, home to... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. At that time, Great Lakes Brewing Company um, wow. still is. And uh, so I got to enjoy a lot of their libations as well. Um, so it's just one of those things that I sort of fell in love with. As you can probably tell, I love the process. Um, I love how mm -hmm. all of that stuff works and how it all goes together. I just, you know, home brewing was a hobby I started in college. It was something that I never stopped. And thank now, you. Now, We're thank never you. Stopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now we turned it into another business. So here yeah. we are. So, <laughs> so that was my first introduction, yeah. and that's how I got into craft beer. Oh, um, nice. So, Excellent. yeah, it's uh, Scotty and Josh is their fault. 
Yeah. Thank you, Scott. You, you were, were yeah, you were and great. you were drinking much that. better beer than most of us in college. Yes, yes. and you had a better uh, first <laughs> roommate experience than <laughs> a lot of us had. So true story. <laughs> I think that it's just. I think here in Maine, it's just amazing that there's just so much beer geekery mm-hmm. <laughs> that I, I just think that it's just so much fun to talk to different people and. Uh, Jane and I got to geek out with Haley last week, and now you obviously, I hope you don't aren't offended by the word geek, because you are Not totally a beer geek. I'm pretty sure you might win the award. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good I, award I to am, win. I am a geek in many ways, so uh, <laughs> beer is one of the better applications. It's a good yeah. thing to be a geek about, right? Yeah, I think, I think so, you yes. want your I doctor wish. to be a geek. Yes. Be Just geek. saying. Hey. Yes. It's mm-hmm. all Fair good. enough. Yeah. It's all good. It's all very good. Knowledgeable. So, knowledgeable yeah. that's yes. what geek means yeah in my mind okay. sure it's a good thing mm-hmm. i like to add the excitement piece to it i feel like that's part of it it's like not only are you really smart about it but you get excited passionate you, yeah, right. pass, yeah that that's the extra layer yeah it's the difference between a lecture and you know geeking oh, out on yeah. something right. Is, right you know right. what the how much do you enjoy the topic and what's right. going on with it so right. um, how well yeah. you convey that passion yes I get a little, like, I don't even know how to excri- describe it in words. It's like a little jittery, little, it's so exciting. But anyways, <laughs> we have come to our final round today, round four. Okay. And our final round is one that we call, very lovingly, three sheets to the wind, three random questions. And um, our first question up is, think back to when you were a kiddo, what was one of your favorite cartoons? Oh, uh, so... There, there's several, but I think the one I keep coming back to is Looney Tunes. Uh, you yes. know, I had the opportunity to introduce my boys to uh, Bugs Bunny, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, particularly the Wagner episode of Kill the Wabbit. Uh, it's, I think, one of the greatest pieces of art ever done. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. anyway, um, yeah, Bugs Bunny is definitely my jam. Uh, <laughs> the Looney Tunes, anything like that, Wile E. Coyote. Mm-hmm. I, to this day, you you know, you flip it on and kind of sit there, and next thing you know, it's an hour later, and you're like, I really should be doing something else. But, uh, but no, I love I love Looney Tunes. There's there's a few others in there, but like I said, that's sort of the one that stood the test of time. And now my kids will. It's funny they they you know when I was growing up, you had to wait a certain time on like a Saturday morning and get up. And right. Get it. Yes. And now my kids just like go find it on YouTube and right. watch it whenever they want. But yeah, yeah. Te- technology is advanced. <laughs> but uh, you, uh, you use the uh, terms Buzz, uh, Bugs Bunny and Jam in the same sentence, which automatically put Space Jam in mind. Uh, how, what are your thoughts on Space Jam? You know, I am honestly going to tell you I have never seen it. I, I yeah, I, 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 I can't lie. I just haven't seen it. Um, so I can't answer your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I. I don't know how I feel about it, but I will say you should at least YouTube it and see if you have a feeling on it. Okay. It introduced okay. me to some different basketball players that I would never have known about otherwise. Okay. So, when did this come out? Oh, uh, 90s? Michael Late Jordan 80s? is in it? Michael Jordan no? is in it. Is that? Okay. Is Bugsy, is there a basketball player named Bugsy? I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know. No clue. Okay. He was short, I think. <laughs> I don't, I don't a know. A short basketball but, player? Yeah. Mean Bugsy? Bugsy Bugs. Heartwarming story. Bugs, is that it? Could be. I don't know. Yeah, that probably would have been early, early 90s, that, that neck of the woods. So, uh, I know a lot about a little and not much about a <laughs> no. I'll have to go look it up. There you go. I but know it's nice. a little about a lot. And not not right. That's no, what I'd say. a lot about I know much. a lot about nothing, <laughs> but a little about a lot. But it's good that you have kids because you can kind of say like, oh, the kids want to watch Looney Tunes. The, you know, the kids want to watch Bugs Bunny. Yeah, of course. See? Yeah. yeah. You're very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and then your wife walks in and goes, they left about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Pretty much, but that's all right. Then she'll sit down and watch a couple episodes with me. So. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a best. keeper. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Okay. All right. We also would like to know, question number two, what song do you have stuck in your head right now? Uh, probably... Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash? Oh, uh, what a great yes. song. So... I, I'm a big fan of The Clash. Um, I listen to that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and it's kind of apt for doing an interview. 
So. <laughs> We're almost done, I promise. <laughs> We're glad you, you stayed. Ghosted. We're glad you stayed. <laughs> oh, goodness. Last question. Sure. What is the uh, best thing that you've had to eat this week? This week? Uh, so my wife, on Sunday, we, uh, we were working... Saturday on all sorts of different things, so uh, we didn't really have a Saturday barbecue for Fourth of July, so we did ours on Sunday. Uh, she made a watermelon salad with uh, mint, uh, arugula, and um, feta. Uh, <gasps> this was inspired by one of the local food trucks who were frequently out in front of our building, and we looked at that and said, oh yeah, we got to do that. It, it was definitely uh, one of the best things I've eaten this summer, without a doubt. I mean, it was just... It was perfect for the weather. It was, you know, perfect for sitting out on the on the porch and, uh, and enjoying. It. Yeah, it was great. So yeah. I would, I'd highly recommend you guys check it out. I just yeah, wrote that down. Yeah. Tina, right? Is it Tina? Yeah, Tina. Tina, Tina can I have the recipe <laughs> or the ingredients? And I lied. I'd like a follow up question. What did you pair with that? Uh, that was actually with uh, we grilled uh, some pork tenderloins and uh, we had some roasted potatoes with it. I like that you went food, but I was Any talking beer. beer. <laughs> oh, with beer. Actually, that beer, that was uh, a Wanderlust and a uh, Simmer Down by Sebago Brewing. Oh, lovely. I think those sounds great. Yes. Dr. Yeah. Beer's house next Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Just expect us there. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> we'll see you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting down with us and talking about beer, and we really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really appreciate it. Was it. Fun. And, uh, Great. I'd certainly would be happy to have you guys back. Yes. Thank you. We'll be here. We'll see you then. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank Bye. you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our second episode. We want to take a moment and thank John and everybody at Foundation Brewing. It was, it was great. We had so much fun. Hooray for Saisons. We love the fact that we get to keep geeking out about beer. If you haven't gone to a brewery and talked to the people making your beer, you need to. Because they are awesome people. If you'd like to read a little bit more, check out a couple YouTube links that we've put together for you. You can go on over to our website, greatbeeradventure.com slash 002. The music in today's episode is brought to you by Old Etc., to learn more about them, head on over to greatbeeradventure.com slash music. We have new things coming your way every Friday, and we can't wait to share them with you. Today's episode was edited, produced, and a lot by me, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. Go subscribe, and we will see you next time. Cheers! Want to know more? Be sure to find us on Twitter or Instagram at Great Beer Women. We can also be found at our website, greatbeardventure.com. Make sure you head on over to iTunes or Stitcher and subscribe. That way you'll be the first to know when a new episode goes live. We would love it if you left a rating and review. There is great mystery on how new and noteworthy works, but it has been proven that five-star ratings help. Great Beer Adventure is a production of Us to You Media. The, what was it? Did you say sacram, sacram? Sacramices. Sacramices. See, now that sounds like a Greek god to me or something, right? Might, More might, than a dinosaur? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Sacra means sugar, uh, <laughs> and Mices means uh, mold or yeast. Uh huh. And, uh, oh, pr- that's sexy. Yeah, very. <laughs> that is uh, the god of pr- sugar mold. <laughs> and uh, Britannomyces <laughs> actually means British, so because it was isolated, the first strain that was identified was from a British beer. So it means British yeast. British British yeast. Okay. Sugar mold and British yeast. Can I have some of that sugar mold water, please? (laughs) That's why we stick with the the, uh, scientific terms. It's it's much more palatable.